I have here the Government Accountability Office document, the nation's fiscal health, May 2023. It was issued a couple weeks ago. This was issued to every leader in Congress by the executive branch. And the GAO is actually one of the best of the, of the entities that our government has. And what do they say? Why do I care? Why do you care? The federal government faces an unsustainable long-term fiscal future. Long-term projections from the Office of Management and Budget and the Department of Treasury, the Congressional Budget Office, and GAO all show that the balance of current revenue and program spending policies result in debt growing faster than the economy. This is unsustainable over the long term. The government never writes reports like this. The government never speaks like this. The fiscal year 2022 federal deficit was among the highest in American history. This occurred even though revenue growth has been strong and federal COVID-19 relief spending has declined from recent years. In addition, the cost of financing the debt increased from prior years because interest rates rose substantially in fiscal 2022. Rising debt relative to economic growth could increase borrowing costs for both the federal government and private borrowers and could slow economic growth. CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, has stated that high and rising federal debt as a share of the economy increases the risk of a fiscal crisis. The underlying conditions driving the unsustainable fiscal outlook pose serious economic security, and social challenges if not addressed. What they're trying to say is the economy could collapse. Could collapse. They go on. For most of the nation's history, the government's debt held by the public as a share of GDP has increased during wartime and recessions, but decreased during peacetime and economic expansions. Most recently, this pattern has changed. Debt held by the public as a share of GDP grew during three of the four most recent economic expansions. What they're saying is, we're not at war. The economy expanded three out of the last four years. And we're spending now like we're at war, like we've never done before in peacetime, in American history. For example, debt held by the public as a share of GDP grew during the economic expansion of June 2009 to February 2020. It did not grow during the economic expansion from March 1991 to March 2001, the prior decade. This is pretty shocking stuff from the bureaucracy. Independent analyses by OMB, Treasury, CBO, and GAO all emphasize that current fiscal policy is unsustainable over the long term. Projections by OMB, Treasury, CBO, and GAO show that debt held by the public would reach its historic high of 106% of GDP by 2029 and continue to grow at an increasing pace. Our simulation shows debt held by the public growing to more than 219% of GDP, twice the size of the economy by 2051. Get your wheelbarrows ready, ladies and gentlemen. This report is available to the public. Let me ask you a question. How many news reports, over the endless news reports, over this budget debate, refer to this document? I bet none. None. That's part of the problem with our media in this country. But there's more. Social Security and Medicare. They issued a report. They issued a report about a month or two ago. And they put out a message to we, the people, the public. Here it is. Right off the Internet. The Social Security and Medicare trustees. So what are we talking about there? The hospital insurance trust fund, that's the biggest chunk, will be able to pay, this is Medicare, 100% of total scheduled benefits until 2031. Three years later than the report last year. At that point, the fund's reserves will become depleted. 2031. The fund's reserves will be depleted at 2023. The old age and survivor's insurance, the bulk of Social Security, trust fund will be able to pay 100% of total scheduled benefits until 2033. 2033. That's frightening. And so they feel that both of these funds, when combined, if you combine their, their period of time, 2034 at the latest and then there's nothing in them because your government stole all the money out of it. 
So, how many people have read this report? This report goes from the trustees and the executive branch to all the leadership in Congress. And what's amazing is that comes out of the executive branch, as does the GAO, and yet it's the executive branch and Biden who are pushing spending in ways that we've never seen before in American history. Here's the letter right here that goes to Congress. That's the letter. It was sent out on March 31, 2023. When you watch this debate on the House floor with Hakeem Jeffries and the Democrats, they don't even talk about this stuff. Now, you'll say, but Mark, that's why Kevin McCarthy cut a bad deal. You know, this deal that they originally voted for, this would put us on the path to fiscal sanity. I hate to tell you this. Nothing the Republicans propose will put us on a path to fiscal sanity. You could take the most conservative member of that 20 or whomever you wish, and nothing they propose will fix it. It might slow it. There might be a respite of a year or two. And the reason is, number one, the House of Representatives is up for election every two years, so you can't bind future Congresses. Number two, the system is broken. Kevin McCarthy, I think, has been a terrific Speaker of the House. He's pushed the investigations. Uh, they've passed laws involving parental rights. They've passed laws on the border. They sit there in the Senate. They've done a great job as far as all that's concerned. He's pulled together his Republicans as best he can. But we have some that they're upset with the fiscal situation. And I think to myself, well, what are they going to do about it? There was once a senator by the name of Tom Coburn from Oklahoma. This was a great man. And he served a few terms in the Senate. As I recall, he was elected to a third term. And the gentleman got cancer. And he retired from the Senate two years early. And he immediately joined Convention of States. What's Convention of States? Give me a second. He said, I've been here a long time. I've been fighting this battle on the budget. And by the way, nobody did it better. He said, this is hopeless. The system is broken. Rather than trashing Kevin McCarthy or trashing any of these people, maybe he could have gotten a better deal, maybe not. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. I just read to you where we're going. Nothing they discussed all last week addresses Social Security or Medicare. And their trajectory keeps going up. It might go like this, up, up, up. I want to read something to you. Article 5, U.S. Constitution. The Congress, whenever two-thirds of both houses shall deem it necessary, shall propose amendments to this Constitution or on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds of the several states, shall call a convention for proposing amendments, which in either case shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of this Constitution, when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states, or by conventions in three-fourths hereof, as one of the other mode of ratification may be proposed by the Congress." So the first mode where Congress, two-thirds of both houses, proposes an amendment, that has been done 27 times. The second method has never been done. Two days before the Constitutional Convention comes to an end on September 17th, September 15th, George Mason, one of the great founders who is really underappreciated, he stands up and he says, we cannot leave it to Congress to fix Congress if Congress becomes oppressive. And so they added language. And here's what George Mason said, Colonel Mason as they called him. Mason thought the plan of amending the Constitution exceptional and dangerous, as the proposing of amendments is in both the modes to depend in the first immediately and in the second ultimately on Congress. No amendments of the proper kind would ever be obtained by the people if the government should be oppressive, as he verily believed would be the case. Well, the government is oppressive. And... As pointed out, Congressional Research Service, they looked at the record, and one observer said nothing. There is nothing to suggest that the framers intended the congressional procedure to be the predominant amendment process. To the contrary, they felt that they had struck a proper balance in distributing the power of proposed amendments, intending to express a preference for neither method. 
In fact, ladies and gentlemen, James Madison, considered the father of the Constitution, he wrote about this method of amending the Constitution to Edmund Randolph, to Thomas Jefferson, to Edmund Pendleton, to George Lee Tuberville, to Henry Lee, again to Thomas Jefferson, to Philip Massey, to George Eve, to Thomas Mann Randolph. And when nullification was growing in 1830, states, slave states in particular, well before the Civil War, were saying, you know what, we can get out of here and we're going to nullify what the federal government does and so forth. It was Madison who said, you can't do that. You can't do that. You bound yourself to a constitution, and your citizens are not only citizens of the state, they're citizens of the nation. They're American citizens as well as citizens of, say, South Carolina. Now, this, you can check out his letter to Edward Everett. That name may sound familiar to you. Edward Everett, it was a scholar, and he was the opening uh, act, if you will. He gave the speech at the Gettysburg a battlefield, a very long speech before Abraham Lincoln gave his speech. That's 34 years later or so. And in that letter, he says no. He references nullification. So why does any of this matter, ladies and gentlemen? Because our Constitution can save us. We have all these conservatives in the House and the Senate who are upset about what's taking place. Not one of them gets up on the floor and talks about Article 5. Why is that? They know I know, and you know, and if you didn't before, now you know, we are on a horrendous path, and no bill passed by Congress is going to fix it. I'm all for taking as much conservative uh, principles and applying them as possible. But we have a structural problem. It didn't happen yesterday. It's happened over 100 years. And our Constitution gives us a way out. And if the state legislatures, the state representatives, and the state senators would understand their power, they actually have more power than Congress and the president put together when it comes to fixing this problem. Under Article 5, there are now 20 state legislatures that have adopted a resolution for a convention, not a constitutional convention, a convention of states. That's a meeting of state delegates, which they used to have before there was a constitution. You don't have a constitutional convention. We didn't when the first 27 amendments were adopted, and you still need 34 states to, rat to ask for it and 38 states to ratify. So it's not easy. But I have to ask myself, where are my fellow conservatives in the House and in the Senate? Where are the conservatives running for president? Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy, they have supported this. Perhaps there's others that I'm not aware of. But if you want to save the country, at least fiscally, this is what you have to do. So what should we propose if we have this convention? I wrote a book called The Liberty Amendments, and I want to read this to you. Spending. Two amendments to limit federal spending and taxing. There's not a thing that can be done statutorily to fix this, because the House is elected, as I said, every two years, and the Senate flips a third every two years. And so one Senate and House cannot bind the other. Plus, the Democrats... They want to drag this country into bankruptcy. That's abundantly clear. So what did I propose? Spending. Section 1. Congress shall adopt a preliminary fiscal year budget no later than the first Monday in May for the following fiscal year and submit said budget to the president for consideration. Why? Because they never meet the deadline. You have to meet the deadline. Section 2. Shall Congress fail to adopt a final fiscal year budget prior to the start of each fiscal year which shall commence October 1, that's their schedule, of each year, and shall the president fail to sign the budget into law, an automatic, across the board, 5% reduction in expenditures from the prior year's fiscal budget shall be imposed for the fiscal year in which a budget has not been adopted. I propose that this needs to be in the Constitution. Section 3, total outlays of the United States government for any fiscal year shall not exceed its receipts for that fiscal year, period. Section 4, total outlays of the U.S. government for each fiscal year shall not exceed 17.5% of the nation's gross domestic product for the previous calendar year. So that allows growth in the budget, but it puts a GDP cap on it. You're not going above this amount. That's not my idea. That was Milton Friedman's idea, and it's a brilliant idea. Section 5, Total receipts shall include all receipts of the United States government 
but shall not include those derived from borrowing. Total outlay shall include all outlays of the United States government, except those for the repayment of debt principal. We have a debt. We can pay it. It needs to be within the, within the uh, budget amount. Section 6, Congress may provide for a one-year suspension of one or more of the preceding sections in this article, one year, by three-fifths vote of both houses, provided the vote is conducted by roll call and sets forth the specific excess of outlays over receipts over the 17.5 percent. Now, why did I put there? In case we go to war. Remember what the GAO said about war? That's when budgets increase. And Section 7. The limit on the debt of the United States held by the public shall not be increased unless three-fifths of both houses of Congress shall provide for such an increase by roll call vote, because it's out of control now. This amendment shall take effect in the fourth fiscal year after its ratification. So you have four years to build up. I have a tax section, too. Section 1. Congress shall not collect more than 15% of a person's annual income from whatever source derived. You know, they have it at cap, capital gains... That's it. 15 percent. Person shall include natural and legal persons. Section two. The deadline for filing federal income tax returns shall be the day before the date set for elections to federal office. You pay your taxes the next day. If you vote in person, you vote. So the consequences of the acts of Congress and the president are known and felt the day you vote. Section three. Congress shall not collect tax on a decedent's estate. When somebody dies, leave them alone. Section 4, Congress shall not institute a value-added tax or national sales tax or any other tax in kind or form. I was thinking, you limit it to 15%, I don't want them to get around it with a value-added tax, a national sales tax, or some other scheme. Section 5, this amendment shall take effect in the fourth fiscal year after its ratification. So my question to you, America while they're putzing around in Congress. Oh, McCarthy could have done better, maybe. Oh, we should have done that. Oh, we should have done that. They're playing on a field that has almost no relevancy to where we're heading in this country. The system is broken. Congress broke it. The president broke it. They broke it under FDR. They've broken it ever since. We have courts involved. We have the bureaucracy involved. We have the IRS involved. Enough. Convention of States, Article 5, state legislatures, it's time to step up. 20 of them have. We need 14 more. You want to fix the country? That's how we fix the country. If you're a conservative in the House, then start to talk about it. If you're a conservative in the Senate, start to talk about it. Even though you have no role in it, you can help us promote it. That's, at least in significant part, how we effectively try to address this. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.